Welcome to the show, gang. Today we're looking at direct proportion, so a sort of substrand of the gradient of graphs. Um, so you may have gone through some notes already, and we'll look at applying those notes and what it all means. So uh, this graph here, right there, shows how far a cyclist travels over four hours. So first off, just starting with reading the graphs, state how far the cyclist has traveled after one, two, and three hours respectively. So we can see across the bottom here, we've got time in hours, and then across the vertical axis, the Y axis, we have the distance covered in kilometers. So we can state one hour. So if we look up one hour, I'll do it in red so it's easier to see. One hour, we can see that if we take that up to the line and then take that point across to the distance, we can see that we've traveled 10 kilometers after one hour. Uh, after two hours, look up again, see that goes across to 20, 20 kilometers, and then three hours. You can see the pattern emerging here that after three hours there are 30 kilometers. State the speed of the cyclist or the rate of change of distance over time. Okay, Distance over time, so we want to break it down to, we could say that, hey, the cyclists uh, traveled 40 kilometers over four, four hours. So we could say that it's 40 kilometers for four hours, but the we want to break it down to a single unit for our hours. Okay, it's easy on this one because we can read up from one, and as we did before, we can see that the speed of the cyclist is 10 kilometers per hour. Okay. Find the gradient of the graph. The gradient of the graph is the rise divided by the run. Okay, so when we say that, just say we head over here, let's do this in green. I might say, right, uh, from the starting point here to the end point that's measured, well, that's a rise of 40. Okay, that's a rise of 40 there. And then from the similar point, when we look at that, Okay, if we look at that rise, the graph has moved across in this direction uh, four hours, so that's divided by four. And if we perform that, then we get 40 divided by four is 10. What do you notice about your answers from part B? Okay, this one there. And part C, this one there. Okay, we hopefully notice that the rate of change equals the gradient. First one done. Okay, let's scroll down. So we've got the rule for linking the height of a plant and time is given by h equals 5t, okay, where h is in millimeters and t is in days. Okay. Find the height of the plant after three days. Okay, For this one, what we need to do is substitute in the value of three into our t position, because that's t in days. Okay, So we've got h equals 5t, then we have h equals 5 times 3. 5 times 3 is 15. Okay, so we get a value of 15 millimeters for the plant after three days. Find the time for the plant to reach 30 mil. Okay, so to find the time, we know that our time is uh, t, and this must be our h value. So we're going to substitute that into h. So H becomes 30, which equals 5T. Now the opposite of timesing by five is to divide by five, which means that they divide become one, so one T. And this one, 30 divided by five is six. So it will take six days for the plant to reach 30 millimeters. Then it asks for 10 centimeters. Now the trick here is that they've changed the units for us. OK, 
Okay, so they've changed from millimeters to centimeters. So because of that, we might want to change, I think it's going to be easiest if we change centimeters to millimeters. So rather than changing the equation, so 10 centimeters is equal to 100 millimeters. Okay, we just times that by 10 because there are 10 millimeters in every centimeter. So now we can substitute it in like we did earlier. And I might use a different color just so we can see it a little easier. So 100 millimeters is equal to five times T. So again, we divide by five to get rid of the five. And so they cancel each other out to become one T. 100 divided by five, I know that to be 20. So I'll just pop this up here, 20 equals T. Okay, or 20 days to reach 100 mil. State the missing values for H in this table. Okay, so time. So where time is, where time was three, we already had that up here. That was, so where time was three, H was 15. Okay. Um, is there anything else here that's familiar? We've got a six and a 20, so that's a bit big. So we can just substitute these in now um, into our original equation. So let's think of, just pop it over here so we can see it five times t, so h is equal to five times whatever t is equal to. So five zeros is still zero. Five ones is five, five twos is 10. We can see the pattern here, zero, five, 10, 15, and four t's is 20. Last of all, let's head down, choose the correct graph that matches the information. All right, so we had, hopefully we can see that first thing we notice is that because after zero days, the plant was zero in height. It can't be one after zero days. Okay, so it can't be A. Uh, then this one, same deal, zero days, 20 mil, and it's going down. Okay, so that leaves a fairly obvious choice in B. Starts off at zero and then goes up. For every one day, we get five mil of growth. So we can see that lining up there. And if we go out to our four, we get four lining up with 20 as well. The last example, a bit of a classic for some who've been in business for a while. Okay, water is poured into an empty tank at a constant rate. It takes three hours to fill the tank with 6,000 litres of water. What is the rate at which water is poured into the tank? Okay, so if we think about that, that it's from earlier, that it's 6,000, that's how much the tank's risen. 6,000 divided by three, that gives us a total of 2,000 liters per hour. That's our rate and that's how we find the gradient as well. Draw a graph of volume V liters versus time using uh, the constraints of zero to three. So time is between zero and three hours. So I've got a set of axes here. Time is almost always on the X axis. Okay, so T is gonna be down there. V is up there. Um, let's put some marks in there. So that's gonna be three hours like we heard. So three, two, and one. This is gonna be 6,000. Now let's go 2,000 and uh, 1,000, I'm going to move that bit there just a touch. So 6,000, 2,000, whoops, that should be 4,000, not 2,000. 4,000, 2,000, and one, two, three hours, okay? Find the gradient of your graph. We've really, we've already, oh, I've got to draw our graph. What am I missing? Draw our graph. So we know that it goes up 2,000 liters every hour. So I can put a dot there and a dot. Point there, point there. And after three hours, get that about right. Should be there. So you can see they're in a pretty straight line. I can draw my straight line in. So it's accurate. So. We know it starts at zero, and we know that it stops there. Not a bad job overall. Let's make it a bit bigger. Go. 
Okay, so that's our line there. Come back to our questions, part C, find the gradient of your graph. Okay, so we can go back, we've already found it up here technically, but it's saying, look, from your graph, find the gradient, let's pick a point. So let's say that after four, after two hours, it's risen by 4,000, so we can use that. So 4,000 divided by two equals 2,000, so that is the gradient. It seems big, but that's the gradient is going up 2,000 liters for every one hour. And the rule for V. Okay, so the rule for V is that, as we can see up here, our gradient, when I found it a little bit earlier, where are we? Do we have an example? Where is it? Yeah, here we go. This will work. Okay, so here, if I look at how much my plant grows, okay, so just say, um, if my rise, if my rise is my height, which it was, and my run is my time, we can go. Okay, after if my rise was ten, ten divided by the run of two, we get a gradient of five. Okay. Now we need to match up what that looked like in terms of the equation. And we can see that right there, we've got 5t. So our gradient goes in front of the coefficient of, of t, or the variable t is the coefficient of t. So same thing down here. We have found our gradient. So our rule becomes the volume is equal to 2000 times t. And we use the rule to find the volume after 1.5 hours. Okay, so V equals 2000. We're going to substitute 1.5 in for T. 1.5 times 2000 is 3000. Okay, so that's that one there. The time to fill 5000 liters. Okay, again, we can match that. And we can put any um, value into this that we want. We could even find um, after a certain amount of time what the volume might be. So for this one, we're looking for 2000. Sorry, that's what we're doing. I've got a volume, not a time. So the volume is 5000, which is equal to 2000 T. So I've just gone and replaced our V this time. And I need to get T on its own, so let's divide both sides by 2,000. So that's the opposite of times in by 2,000. They cancel each other out, and we are left with 2.5 equals T, or 2.5 hours to come up with 5,000 litres of water. Okay, which if we look at that, 2.5 sits about there, and then that mark there, as you can see, is pretty good with halfway between four and six. That's our piece on direct proportion. Hope it was insightful. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with someone if you, they think, if you think they need it, and leave a comment if you've got any questions. See you next time, gang. Bye.